Hey everyone, before I get into this video, hey, we still have like a day or two left to enter our current giveaway going on. A uh, copy of Monster Hunter Rise, $100 and $220 uh, Switch, PlayStation, Xbox gift card, Steam gift card, whatever, four total winners. Be sure to check the description or the pinned comment to enter. Now, we're going to talk about something here. I got, I got some notes here on my phone um, about uh, Sony because yesterday... Sony sort of sent the internet in a tizzy uh, by confirming some rumors that I had some very interesting discussions with many different people on because this is something that people are using to argue against an all-digital future. And by the way, I'm totally fine if you're not into an all-digital future. I actually think the way things are handled in gaming today uh, is fine, but I mean, technically this is about an era that wasn't all-digital either. The problem, of course, being that a lot of games, even today, especially today really, uh, from independent developers, are digital only. We already are in an era when there is a lot of digital only games. And why is that? Well, it can be quite expensive to find someone to publish your game physically. And yes, we do have some people out there like Limited Run Games. It does take some indie games and make them physical. But for the most part, it's not really a realistic venture. And even Limited Run Games can't do it for every game. It's just too expensive. So yes, in the end, a lot of games are only ever available digitally and likely will vanish from being able to purchase at least someday. And that's what happened yesterday as uh, PlayStation, Sony, uh, basically updated their discontinued PlayStation apps, features, and services, talking about PlayStation 3, Vita, and PSP. Uh, let's read what it says on, uh, on, on their official support page. I'll put a link to it down below, which by the way, uh, this link really is only going to show you this information uh, if you are on a desktop. If you are on a phone, for some reason, I'm struggling to find this directly on a phone. So I'm actually looking at a screenshot that I took of my desktop um, because for some odd reason, it's it, it's weird. Anyways, it says here, uh, PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PSP store closure. We are closing PlayStation Store on PlayStation 3 consoles on the 2nd July 2021 and on PlayStation Vita devices on the 27th of August 2021. Additionally, the remaining purchase functionality for PSP will also retire on the 2nd of July 2021. What features can I use after the closure of the PlayStation Store and purchase functionality on PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PSP devices? Features you will still be able to access. You will still be able to re-download and play previously purchased game titles. You will still be able to access previously purchased video slash media content. You will still be able to redeem game and PlayStation Plus vouchers. You will still be able to re-download and play claimed game titles through PlayStation Plus as long as you remain a member of the service. Features you will lose access to. You will no longer be able to purchase PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PSP digital content, including games and video content. You will no longer be able to make in-game purchases through games on PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PSP, aka RIP Digital Currency. You will no longer be able to redeem PSN wallet fund vouchers, aka gift cards, on PlayStation 3, PS Vita or PSP devices once PlayStation Store and purchase functionality for these devices close. Your PlayStation Network wallet funds will remain in your PlayStation Network account, but you will only be able to use your wallet funds to purchase PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 products on the PlayStation Store on the web, PlayStation app, or on a PS4 or PS5 console. How do I access my own games? You can download your own content onto a PlayStation 3, PS Vita, or PS Vita device by accessing the download list on the respective device. So basically, you'll have an ability to re-download games like always, and I think this is this brings up kind of two major sticky points. One, the biggest concern is is addressed by Sony, and that is, hey, if you bought games, you're not losing your games. I don't know if they're ever going to make it so you lose your game someday, but for right now, if you have purchased games on PlayStation 3, PSP, or Vita digitally, you can still download your games and re-download your games if you got a new system. It doesn't matter. So this is great news, of course, on the surface because, hey, the biggest thing for them to do is to make sure if you did spend money on these devices and you did buy things digitally, that you still have access. So kudos to them for making sure that you still have access. Now, this gets into point two, and this is where I 
I'm a little indifferent, but I also understand some of the frustrations. And that is what Sony has done is made it so anybody who buys a Vita, PlayStation, or uh, PlayStation 3, I should say, or PSP after this summer will not have the ability to gain access to the entire library of the system. Now, if you look at prior systems before we had digital content, uh, while it might be stupidly expensive, you can pretty much get any game for any platform. Yeah, it can. Again, there are certain like NES games and SNES games that are just stupidly expensive, but technically, assuming you have unlimited funds, you could buy original copies of these games and then bada bang, bada boom, play them on original hardware. What's happening here is that while I would say a majority, if not maybe even all of the PlayStation 3 library is already available online through ROMs, and thus you can play them on emulators, some people on hacked devices, PSP and Vita were famous for being hacked devices that people were playing all sorts of games on. I, I think it's still of note that in general, uh, for especially for PlayStation 3, it's going to be a lot harder to play these ROMs locally. Now someone's going to come in here and talk about how there, there are different hacks that exist out there for people that pull this off, but for the general consumer uh, that might just be looking to get into retro gaming, uh, that's not really going to be possible uh, to just hack it up uh, and, and, and make it work. Now, people might be able to sell their PlayStation Network accounts, which is also technically illegal and probably will get those accounts banned eventually. I'm just, I'm throwing out there that it, it does suck. There's an entire library of digital content uh, that is exclusive to PlayStation 3, uh, that is just dead in the water. And here's the thing. This isn't as bad as a Nintendo. Um, so Nintendo for Wii, they shut down their services back in 2019, like January, I think, of 2019 or whatever, for Wii. The shop channel is entirely gone. And as of today, you can't re-download your purchases. So Nintendo did this as well in the same generation where, hey, look, you can't even re-download your games. You're just done. Now, was there a ton of digital games on Wii? Not nearly as many as on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 because Nintendo's online was not very robust. Despite the fact that Nintendo had one of the first early online shops. Remember those WiiWare games and all that? Like, they had the first, one of those first super early online shops even before some of the other systems. But the other systems did them better. Um, had better storefronts, better connectivity. Uh, and so it just, uh, it, it, digital content ended up blowing up on those systems uh, fast. And even today, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox, and Xbox Series X, all these systems, all these modern day platforms from non Nintendo uh, companies, have a much greater percentage of digital sales, even compared to Nintendo. And Nintendo had a massive sales bump last year digitally because of COVID, but. In general, these other platforms are always leading the way. Obviously, PC, as an example, is essentially exclusively digital only. You can still find some physical copies for certain games out there, but people don't even have disk drives. I don't. I haven't had a computer with a disk drive 15 years. It's been a while since I even had, like, I think the last one I had was maybe a uh, laptop. I have an old Asus laptop, some, I think buried over there. It, it technically still turns on. I only keep it because you can burn discs with it. it it's one of those uh, DVD uh, rewritable disc drives. So like you can actually burn discs. And uh, since my car, you know, our car could technically still take uh, CDs and DVDs and all that. Um, it's cool to be able to burn some music on a disc. I don't do it that often because it also takes a thumb drive. So you can do that. You can also just stream directly off your phone. But you know what I mean. It's it's an option out there. So that's why I kind of keep that computer lingering around in case I ever need to burn a disc. It's a pain in the butt to use that computer. This is before SSDs were in every laptop. Um, very, very slow. Takes like what, seven minutes to boot into Windows. It's, I don't know. Anyways, you guys probably remember those days. I, mean, I think it's rocking Windows Vista or maybe, maybe even before Windows Vista. I'm, I'm, anyways, the point is, that um, technology has come a long way, and with it, so has the advent of digital gaming. And now people are concerned because, hey, Sony took your shit away. And it's honestly a valid concern uh, that I don't know that there's an easy solution for. In the end, the PlayStation 3, uh, the Vita, and the PSP after this summer, if you are just getting into those platforms as a retro gamer, because you'd have to... I know, it feels weird saying that the Vita is a retro system when it's like nine years old, but let's just be honest. Um, that's what these platforms are, are, are becoming. They're, they're no longer sold, no longer available new. Um, I mean, you might be able to find a box one that's never been opened somewhere from a collector, but 
in the end, these platforms, uh, if you buy them as a retro gamer and you're getting into retro gaming with Sony platforms like these, um, it's a lot harder to try to get a complete collection because you can't buy some games ever. There are, again, I don't know how many, because I, I tried looking up there. There isn't a, a well-tracked list of PlayStation 3 digital games. Uh, there are thousands of them, but there, there's not a well-tracked list of like what ones we're losing access to because of this. Um, you know, like what ones are specifically only ever released on PlayStation 3 that didn't come to other platforms that have better access. So, but it, it, it's neither here nor there. You buy the platform and you can't you can't get the you can't get downloadable content. So any DLC that came out, you can't buy that for the, it's just, it's, it's not good. There, there's nothing about this that is good. And again, this isn't Sony only. I know this video with the title and the thumbnail feels like, oh my gosh, Sony's put on blast, but it's not just Sony. Nintendo did this too back in 2019. It started in 2018 uh, and then really, f you know, put the, you know, the hammer that nail in for, you know, just killing the Wii in uh, 2019. So yeah, Nintendo did it worse. Sony's not as bad yet. Um, they are, are probably going to shut down the ability to re-download these games someday either. I, I know that's a pretty big jump in assumption to say that, but from Sony's side of things, it's understandable why they shut down these shops. Uh, for starters, it costs money to maintain these shops. It, not just talking about server space, because they're still offering the ability to download all these games, so it's still taking up server space. But you actually have to maintain the uh, not just the servers, but the actual shop itself. You got to pay employees to, 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 you know, make sure it's not getting hacked and all that jazz. Uh, and hey, um, it, if nobody's really buying games on it, they're losing money, so they're going to shut it down. So from a business perspective, it makes sense. I'm sure they've looked at the numbers and seen, hey, in 2020, the king of digital years. People weren't buying anything on PlayStation 3, Vita, or PSP. So why keep the shops up? It's a very valid argument, by the way. I think the most important thing Sony has on lock, you can still re-download games you bought. That is the most important thing. People aren't losing access to games that they purchased. Okay, That is the most important, I can't stress it, the biggest thing that Sony's doing. You are not losing access to the games that you purchased. Thank God for now. But it's still not good for those that, uh, you know, we're thinking about maybe getting into these platforms down the line when they're more financially stable. And they just want to go back through Sony's retro library. Now, credit to Sony. They do have a service that lets you play some of these games, you know, through their streaming service. The problem for Sony is there's always going to be issues with licensing. There's a bunch of games published on PlayStation 3 that will never come back again. We've seen this with other retro systems in the past. From even on Nintendo side of things, there are just some games we're never going to see again. We're probably never going to see Home Alone from the SNES ported anywhere. Too many licensing issues. Look at all the licensing issues we've had with GoldenEye 007 from the N64. Trying to get that game to fully come back. We've had a remake, but we can't seem to get the original game upgraded visuals too many licensing issues with that um including nintendo who owns some copyright on it so it, it there's just a lot of things like that that exist throughout the history of gaming that we're just not going to see some of these companies don't even exist anymore some of these indie studios that made games back in those days those early days aren't around anymore so like then you have those games as well that what do you do with them who owns the rights does anyone and they don't become public domain for, what is it, like 50 years, 100 years? Yeah. Again, almost all these games that anyone's going to care about or think about are going to be available as ROMs, but that, again, is not a legal method of ownership. It's also, hey, not the same as buying a game and just playing it on your system. And people are going to worry, what's going to happen with PlayStation 4 eventually? Are they going to shut down that shop? In nine years what about hey what about playstation 5 right now and if you're buying a bunch of digital which all the games i own on playstation 5 are digital right now what's gonna happen to those games in the future why can't sony just make everything backwards compatible and just say hey you know what if you own a playstation 5 and want to play your playstation 3 library bring all your games over that doesn't solve by the way the fact that the shop is gone a lot of playstation 3 games on that shop will never come back I, at this point, I think Sony's, you know, 
Can't win, can't lose. In an ideal world, Sony just doesn't touch anything and leaves it all alone. But also, it costs them money. And from a business, they are a for-profit business. They need to think about money sinking. Um, I get it. I don't know if there's a, a, a good way. I think the, the number one solution would be when you shut down the PlayStation 3 Vita and PSP shops, that you allow those shops to basically just transition into you can buy these games now on PlayStation 5. I don't know. Again, there still could be licensing issues with that. I'm not really sure how that could work. Um, but it is something that I think would be the ultimate solution. Fine. Shut down those retro platforms, but make sure the entire library of that content, especially digitally, is now available on PlayStation 5 for purchase and put out your own official emulator on PlayStation 5 to uh, buy those games and then play them locally on the system. That, to me, is the best solution, but also one of the trickiest. We've been over it. Licensing issues are still going to be a thing. Um, I'm, I'm not sure there, there's any positive way to spin what they're doing, but at least... You're not losing anything you've already bought. So, you got that. All right, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Does this make you scared for digital purchases you have today on any platform, from Nintendo to Sony to Xbox to PC? Although PC is a little different. PC always has workarounds for the. Anyways, we're not going to go to the PC. That's a whole other conversation on why digital content seems to be just fine on PC and it doesn't have these similar concerns. Even some of those really, really old games that struggle to run on modern operating systems and hardware, there are workarounds, patches, emulators, um, ways to force those games to run, anyways. Um, a little different than gaming today. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.